Now cross to Nazareth, where my colleague Dumelo Mututuan is on standby. We understand, Dumelo, that you now have Mr. Stanley Matabata with you. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Mfundo Mabalani. Yes, indeed, we are still here at Nazareth. It is the last day, but of course the work of the day hasn't necessarily ended. The NEC, incoming National Executive Committee, is currently being uh, voted in, and uh, we're chowing a couple of time here away from some ANC members, particularly those key uh, leaders within the ANC, just to get, of course, more reflections of this past couple of days. They're meant to go into uh, voting, but we have to have uh, this conversation with them. I earlier on spoke to... Uh, incoming and newly elected chairperson that is Gwede Mandashe. But now I'm, so, I'm about to speak to Ndadistan Matabata, the premier of the Limpopo. So thank you so much for your time and good morning. Dr. Good Nick. morning and good morning to your viewers. I mean, you, you came very much highly defended. Uh, when I introduced you earlier on, I told uh, the viewers that I'll be speaking to the defeated chairperson. Gwede <laughs> Mandashe was saying, no, 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 no. You will not refer to my fellow comrade uh, as defeated. He's still uh, a sounding member of you know, the ANC, well-respected leader. How how has contesting been for you this past couple of days? No, no. Um, I think it was okay. Mm. I mean, conference being conference is very stressful. Yeah. Uh, and strenuous. Uh, we, we are happy that uh, we are done with it. Mm. But I'm also happy that the ANC ended up being the winner out of all these things. Right. What happened, though? I'm sure those who've seen the visuals, seen different uh, reports, but haven't necessarily heard from you, uh, as in San Matabat, who was standing as a candidate in the role of chairperson. What happened behind the scenes? There were conflicting views around last-minute lobbying and changes, not consulting with delegates. You're in a better position to explain to us. It's not true that we have not consulted with delegates. Mm. But um, let me give you uh, the sequence of events, what happened. Um, we left the province with a mandate of presenting six candidates mm. to the conference, led by uh, President Ramaphos, mm. uh, Paul Mashatile, Deputy President, Stan Matawata, Jefferson, Mutumiseni Ntuli, Secretary General, Deputy Secretary Nomvula Mkonyan, and Treasurer General as uh, um, Bejani Chauk. Right. That was the mandate that we're carrying from the branches of Limbo. But we, when we came here, before we came here, in fact, mm. we started negotiating with those who were representing the list that was representing uh, uh, the campaign of uh, President Ramaphosa. And, uh, you know, uh, it was not easy mm. because they, they just flatly refused to take any from our list of references right. except the name of President Ramaphosa. Because we were saying to them, look, we are sharing one goal. We all want unity and renewal of the ANC. Mm. We all want it to be led by President Ramaphosa. But we also want this team of uh, candidates, you know, mm. uh, team of members to be part of this uh, your list of preference. Right. Even if you can take two or three, it's fine with us. But they flatly rejected us. Mm. And out of that rejection, you know, we continued, continued, continued to negotiate with them up till the 11th hour. Mm. At the 11th hour, I then convened a special PEC here and said, comrades, we've got a problem here. Mm. These comrades are rejecting us. So what is the way forward? What do we do? So I want you to discuss this matter. But because I'm an interested party, I can be part of this meeting. Mm. I'm going to recuse myself from this meeting, and you continue discussing this matter in this meeting. You decide as to whether you remain with the president along, alone and dump the five, or you go with the five and dump the president. Mm -hmm. Dumping is even a, 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 very, a very hard way. Mm -hmm. Abandon the, the list of preference of the president, or uh, you go with the list of preference of uh, Zuelim Kiza and take the five uh, or three of those uh, who are on the, on, on the mandate of the branches of the ANC in Limpopo right. with you. So they remained discussing as the PEC. And then, whilst they were discussing there, they could not reach an agreement mm. until they came to report to me. It's now the deputy chairperson and the provincial secretary right. came to report to me, chairperson, we could not agree. 
because here really you can understand the difficulty of this situation. Mm. We are between a rock and a, and a hard surface. Right. Yes. So I said, now comrades, because you could not decide, what do we do? We've got to have a way forward. We are leaders here. Mm. Yeah. So I, I said, my suggestion is that as individual leaders, not as, as, as a collective okay. of the PEC now, as individual leaders, let's go and provide leadership in our mm. various, uh, mm. in our, in our, in our various uh, pockets and try to get more value for the branches of the African nation, for the wish, right. wishes of the branches of the people of, of Lumpo. If I may come in there, Dr. do you regret that decision, that suggestion? Because others from your province are saying that it created a division. Uh, it seems that what you had agreed on uh, in your branch general meeting now, uh, everybody was almost making their own decisions and not coming as a collective. Do, do you regret that suggestion now? No, no. I don't, I don't, because whatever, whatever way we are, we, we are going to divide, to, to, to depart from the mandate of the branches, mm. is either, because the mandate of the branches did not have uh, Guatemala, did not have uh, who's uh, the, the comrade, uh, uh, Mabuya, yes, Oscar Mabuya, yes, as a deputy, they, as the, deputy mm -hmm. the mandate of the branches of the ANC did not have those people. They did not have uh, Gwen Ramokopa uh, and, and others, mm. you know. So if we were to go with that, we would be departing from the mandate of the people of Lumpopo. The mandate of the people of Lumpopo did not have Zuelim Kiza either. Mm. If we were going with Zuelim Kiza, we would be departing from the mandate of the... Whatever way. Right. But, uh, even if we went with the lineup, uh, the prefer list of preference of uh, President Ramaphosa, we will still be departing from the mandate of the people of Lumpopo. Because they did not have Goethe, they did not have Oscar, they did not have Goethe. You mentioned that the campaign side, the camp, yeah, and that is Cyril Ramaphosa rejected yes. uh, you during negotiations and what you were coming to the, to, the, to, to the table with. What exactly were they rejecting? They were rejecting any, to add anyone from this list of preferences. That we were bringing, mm -hmm. the, we, we, we were bringing Paul Mashatile. They were rejecting that name. We were bringing uh, Stan Matabata. They were mm -hmm. rejecting that name. We were bringing Nom Vulam Konyan. They were rejecting that name. We were bringing Mdumiseni uh, Ntuli. Uh, they were rejecting that name. Mm -hmm. As you would remember, their list, uh, they have had their own list of preferences. Yeah. What does this mean then for the Limpopo province? Because I think what occurred even with KwaZulu Natal, because there were concerns that uh, there's not even one representative from KwaZulu Natal within the top seven due to these uh, divisions, due to not coming in as a one province uh, in terms of voting for Limpopo as a province, leaving conference. What does it mean now for you as the leadership as well as for your members? As, as Limpopo, I think we have achieved more than what we had intended to achieve. Yes, we did not have Stan Matabata as chairperson, neither here nor there. Mm. Uh, it's, it's accepted. But you had President Ramaphosa from the mandate of the people of Lumpo, the branches of Lumpo. Mm. You have had Paul Mashatile from the mandate of the, the branches of Lumpo. You have had Nomvula um, Mukonyani um, from the mandate of the branches of Lumpo. Three mm. went in. And then Oh, as cherry on top, you also had one child of Limpopo, you know, one woman, young, vibrant woman from Limpopo, mm. as, as in uh, Marubin Ramohop, being uh, on the top, top seven right. of the African the second DSG. For, the, for the second DSG. Mm. The very first time in the history of the African National Congress that you get a person from Limpopo in the top seven. Is that so, important to you as Limpopo? Because some important. are saying that prioritizing and singling out provinces too is divisive, saying that we shouldn't uh, rather you know, be talking about provinces, but more of a, a united national ANC. Absolutely, absolutely. They are, they are very right, mm. they are very right. But the reality of our situation is that we've got provinces. Right. The reality of our situation is that these provinces want to feel represented in the collective. You know, that is the reality that we are facing. Mm. Unfortunately, human nature is like that. Mm.
The top seven, uh, w what should be of priority for you in your view? Uh, uh, some critics are saying there's ill discipline. Discipline within the organization needs to be a priority because yeah. the behavior of some of the delegates uh, was untoward. I think for some watching uh, at home, we're saying, is this the kind of leaders we want in government? If this is how they behave amongst themselves as comrades in a conference? That's just one criticism. For you, what should be of priority to address uh, by the top seven? Yeah, so right. The reason why I like this concept of unity and renewal is because it talks about the African National Congress. Because it, the African National Congress is about three things, effectively. One is the issue of unity. We are only strong if we are united as the African National Congress. But you can't be in, united with people who, who are ill-disciplined. You want the unity of the disciplined. Mm. You know? So the second item is discipline. Hence, we always emphasize on maximum discipline, high morale and maximum discipline in the African National Congress. We spoke of something called iron discipline. Mm. That is very key for me also. And then the last one is love, the love for the people of South Africa. Mm. You know? So that is why we always said when we were fighting in this revolution that we are fighting the war of love. Because we love, we must prioritize mm. the people of South Africa. We must make sure that we deal with corruption. Because, because corruption is something that uh, erodes this love that we are talking about. Because at the end of the day, you end up having a road full of the potholes because somebody pocketed the money that was supposed to, to, to stop those potholes. Mm, you know? mm, mm. Somebody pocketed the money that was supposed to, to buy drugs for, for the hospital, mm. you know, medicines for the hospital. So the love for our people becomes very paramount. So I think having uh, analyzed the top seven, all of them, with, without exception, all of them understand and know the African National Congress. They've got impeccable credentials mm, mm. Yeah, as leaders of the African National What Congress. about the incoming NEC? We were, were speaking before you came onto the table that you're about to go vote yeah. uh, for the National uh, you know, Executive or Committee. What about those 80 members that will be surrounding uh, you know, these seven uh, leaders? What about them and also uh, the factions that we have seen uh, you know, during this conference, the lack of love and discipline that you talk about and unity that we have seen? Mm. Uh, what's the mandate now to make sure that you do select those who will support that top seven? You know, once we can manage, we can succeed in this concept of discipline, then we'll be able to can get good cadres who are going to be part of this uh, 80, uh, 80 members of the African National Congress, National Executive Committee. Mm. And uh, once you get those who understand, like you, the conference has, has, has already humbled us. Mm. They gave us seven good comrades, not from any slate, you know, not, not a single slate one there, you know, because remember, who, um, uh, who is that Paul, the deputy chairperson, um, Bonomvula, they were not coming from the same slate with uh, Marubi right. and, um, and, um, and, and, and Gwen Ram. Gwen Ramahopa and, and Gwete Mandash, you know, mm. they came from different states. You know, if conference can do the same with this NEC, I'm telling you, we'll have a united African National Congress, and the glory days of the African National Congress will come back. How, how do you plan on dealing with with corruption? At least adding your voice uh, as a respected member of the ANC, you know, dealing with corruption. We know that there have been some members within the party accused uh, of uh, corruption, whether appearing in court, a uh, court of law, or not. But the allegations are there. The image tainted uh, already is there. But but how do you then think corruption can be uprooted? strengthen the legal justice system go back go back to our people in structures of, of civil society mm. your churches your um, non-government organization and mass-based organizations and try go there and show the people the ills the evilness of corruption so that even to schools you know we need to create a situation at, at a school level from grade R, grade one. A child must know what corruption means. 
The child must know what happens to you if you are corrupt. Mm. Well, the child must know what happened to the next person if somebody who's in the leadership is corrupt. Mm, mm. We, we need to inculcate that. You know, you look, you look at uh, what is happening in countries such as China, countries such as, as, as Botswana, where corruption is at, 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 at it, it's, its lowest. It's because they are non-compromising when they come to that. Yeah, and is the ANC willing to set that example? I think it's, we, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. The reason why currently you see the, the corruption being exposed like it is exposed is because the ANC has created structures to do that. The ANC government has created the SIU. The ANC government has created the Hawks. You know, what President Ramaphosa did after 19, uh, 2017 when he came into power was just to make sure that he, the NPA is strong again, the Hawks are, are, are having... A, the uh, hog will not have teeth. Uh, mm. Claws. Yeah. Right. <laughs> claws is the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are having claws. And, and, and you have got a strong SIU. Mm. Mm. So I think the ANC is willing to do that. And when we talk unity and renewal, we are talking about that. Oh. And uh, we must start, because now that we resolve, we are going to strengthen the step aside resolution. Mm. We must really strengthen it and implement it fairly. Mm. You, you're obviously working as an organization so to win back the lost votes during the local government election in 2024. I think the local government elections were, were a reality yeah. hit in the face for the ANC about the groundwork that still needs to be done. When we look at service delivery, where are the challenges there, uh, do you suppose? And I'm asking you this, Tadema Tawata, because you were quoted, uh, I think, as also saying that it seems service delivery is exaggerated. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're misquoted uh, on that or not, but you were definitely quoted as saying that service delivery seems to be exaggerated uh, within the country. But w w what, how do you plan then to address issues of service delivery to those who will say to you that there is no service delivery, at least at the par excellence and promises uh, of which the ANC has promised? I I agree with anyone who says service delivery is not at the level where the ANC would have wanted it to be. But when you say there is no service delivery, mm. I become surprised mm. because I move around in my village there, compare to the, the, the compare it with the position in which it was prior to, to 1994, very different. Mm. Prior to 1994, we had a lot of mud houses in very many villages in our, our provinces. Today you hardly find one mud house in many villages. Mm. You, fi you find um, big houses built with tiles and all this kind of uh, clay bricks, you know. You, 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 you find uh, tar, tar roads going to rural villages. Prior to 1994, you'll only find a tar road that goes to a farm of a white man mm. or the uh, tar road that goes to a town. But you will not find tar roads in the in the villages, and and in many townships you do not even have tar roads. Tar roads, sorry. Today you've got them. You did not have prior to 1994 uh, free health care, you know, primary health care. Today you've got it. You did not have many uh, brilliant young minds left schooling prior to 1994 because they did not have money to go to school. Today you got you 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 are paid for. Uh, from primary education, secondary education, up till university education, tertiary education, you still get nervous first there, mm. you know. So if you say there is no service deliver, I would say no, hey, you are missing it somewhere. Mm. But if you say uh, you, you need to accelerate the pace, I would say yes, I agree with you. We need to accelerate the and pace. And what's delaying that acceleration? One is the issue of uh, skills. In many rural provinces, you've got problems with skills. Uh, and that gives rise to this concept of corruption. Hence, you find so many municipalities and provinces, provincial department and national department getting what you call disclaimer audit opinion. This disclaimer audit opinion, uh, the auditor general is simply saying to you that, hey, I can't make head or tail about what was happening with the monies of, of, of government. Why? Because people deliberately or so made, uh, made, made uh, documents, reference uh, documents to, to, to get lost. Mm. Why? 
Why do they do that? Because they want to hide corruption. No. But if you had this uh, skilled people being uh, employed there, mm. uh, they, they would be in the position to can uh, build what I call a dashboard, you know, a dashboard of a car, you know, which will make it easy for you to can identify the loopholes where the, where, where the government department is, is bleeding. Right. Build proper systems. That is what delays us currently. Proper systems and skills. You also mentioned during your, your State of the Province address earlier on this year that job creation is a priority for the province. And as far as, you know, your mandate with, you know, socioeconomic recovery, especially post-COVID, the, 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 the plan to create 48,000 jobs in five to ten years, is that still That's on, still the, in on the cards? Yeah. It's still on the cards. If you look at the, the programs, the in, infrastructure projects that we are engaging upon, and the pace in which they are moving, you will see that the job is still in mining, for example, mm. what is happening, what we are, we are doing uh, in the mining sector, you'll see that uh, the promise is still, uh, is still alive. Yeah, and the pledges that you had received, the likes of Masingita Group yes, coming on board, of, are they still on board? Uh, with, yes, with the Masingita province? has already started. They've already started With a smart city? Yes, they started building a smart city. Mm. I went there not long ago to go and uh, observe uh, the, the, the development there. I was very impressed. Mm. They've already started. And it's not only my singing, there's many of them. I'm going to leave you in a, in a few minutes. Before I do then, I suppose uh, today being uh, last day uh, of conference in Dati Matabata, uh, delegates still voting at this time. Dati Gwede Mantashe earlier on spoke about how the issue of money is eroding uh, quality leadership within the ANC. I think it's been seen uh, even during the contestation of the top seven that people were peddling money, uh, you know, in terms of getting, you know, their preferred candidate. As those are currently voting as we're having this conversation, what is your appeal to them uh, for the final 80 in the NEC that will be announced? I want to say to our comrades they must not sell their soul. Because at the end of the day, the soul of the African National Congress must remain intact. Mm. We need to bring back the glory days of the African National Congress. And for as long as we are prioritizing money like you, you are putting it, you get into the election of the leadership of the ANC because you've got money. That is why I did not have a campaign. Mm. I did not run a campaign. I did not have an account of a campaign. I was just depending on the branches of the African National mm. Congress mm. because I did not want to buy my way into the leadership of the African National Congress. And I don't want to believe, looking at the top seven that we are, we are having now, I don't want to, buy, to believe that any one of them bought his way into it because they are very credible leaders of the African National mm, Congress. Mm, mm. Do you believe that Senator Ramaphosa will finish his second term? Yes, definitely. Mm. In fact, we'll defend him. To do, we'll, we'll make sure that he finishes second term. Uh, unless if you know something that I don't know. No, no, we're asking because it seems <laughs> that uh, when it came to his uh, uh, predecessor, Jacob Zuma, he, he couldn't finish uh, his second term day. as well. And also we've heard from the opposition within <laughs> the ANC, those opposing Sarah Ramaphosa as an individual, saying that he will not uh, finish his term, he will resign. No, he will finish his term. He will finish it. Yeah, I think I, I've got confidence in him. 2024, is the ANC winning? The ANC will win elections in 2024. What we need to do is just go back to our people All and right. humble ourselves before them. Mr. Matawata, that's where I leave it. And I thank you so much for sure. joining us. Mr. Sen Matawata, uh, joining us right here uh, on uh, ENCA. Indeed, it is the uh, 55th National Elective Conference. Quite a lengthy conversation uh, we have had with him, giving us some context as to what exactly happened uh, for his campaign, uh, with a lot of reports uh, coming out as to how he did not make it into becoming the uh, chairperson of the ANC. Hotly contested position uh, with Greta Mandash, of course, uh, took it amongst other six uh, ANC top leaders. With that being said, we'll be right back with more coming to you live from Nasdaq.